Yes. Uh, so we'll jump right into it. This is a exciting evening with, uh, with a lot of wonderful people here that we want to recognize. So I will turn it over to Dr. Harrison. Yeah. So uh, welcome everybody and good evening. Uh, it's really exciting to see uh, so many of our talented student athletes and their coaches here tonight. Uh, we had an amazing, amazing winter season. Um, and with wonderful uh, team accomplishments um, and individual accomplishments. Um, so tonight we're going to stop and recognize um, some of those notable feats. And so I'd like to ask Mr. McCormick, who is hiding back there, um, to come forward. Um, and we're going to acknowledge um, four groups of student athletes. Thank you very much, Dr. Harrison. Um, it's not that much. The print has gotten a lot bigger, so I can see it. So it's, uh, <laughs> my notes aren't that long. But uh, it's a great opportunity to recognize our winter athletes here. Um, as Mr. Hanna said, it does feel like winter. I think I saw a few snowflakes outside. So it's ap appropriate that we are recognizing our winter athletes tonight. Um, and it was a tremendous season, uh, both team-wise and individual-wise. So we'll start first with winter track, uh, who is coached by uh, someone who's no stranger around here, Dr. Scott Mosenthal. Uh, and assisted by Mr. Barry, uh, who could not make it tonight. And we're going to recognize four members of that team. Uh, and we'll start with Max Forte. Max was a um, long jumper, and he was the Class C sectional champion. He was also the league champion in the long jump. Um, he had the longest long jump uh, for a ninth grader in New York State this year. He also was a league champion, uh, sorry, he also finished second in the 55 meter high hurdles and third in the high jump, both in the league meet, but was as being recognized for a Class C sectional champion in the long jump tonight. Max? Great. Thank you. Hey, come on up. Next up um, is Adama Ahmed. She was the girls class C sectional champion in the shot put as well as the league champion in the shot put. Uh, she also participates I think in some sprint relays so she's a multi-event person and she's being recognized tonight for her class C sectional championship in the shot put. Adama. Our next winter track athlete couldn't be here tonight, but he's no stranger to coming to these meetings. Uh, Luke Carmasino was the Class C sectional champion in the 3,200 meter run. He also was the league champion in that 3,200 meter run and took second place in the 1,600 meter run. He also was the sectional champion in cross country in the fall. So couldn't be here tonight, but a nice hand for Luke Carmasino. And our last winter track athlete, again, no stranger to coming to these meetings, Zoe Maxwell. I know that. I'm saving that. Um, so Zoe, uh, league champion in the 55-meter, 300-meter, and triple jump, Class C sectional champion in the girls' 55-meter and the triple jump, second in the 300 meters. She qualified and competed in the state championships in the 300-meter, um, and she's being recognized tonight, obviously, as a Class C sectional champion, and it's her birthday. I would mention Dr. Mosenthal's done this for the last couple of years. In his retirement, I doubt he would have thought he'd be spending 
long days at the Armory and Rockland Community College. But uh, thank you so much for your efforts. Great job. Next up, we're going to recognize two wrestlers, both who were all section selections. First uh, is Aiden Daly, uh, just a sophomore this year, uh, finished with a record of 22 and 10, was an all league selection and an all section selection. Uh, he's also a three sport athlete, was a runner up in the sectional finals, but being recognized tonight as a all section selection, Aiden Daly. Next up is Joel Andrade. Joel compiled a 30 and 11 record his senior year and amassed 60 wins over his junior and senior year. He was an all league selection and sectional champion in the 120 pound weight class, which sent him to the New York State Championships. He's the 14th sectional champion in Irvington wrestling history. He's going on to the University of Chicago and intends to wrestle there, being recognized as a sectional champion, Joel Andrade. Also like to recognize in attendance tonight, their head coach uh, done a fantastic job with the wrestlers, always asking for more, um, Brian Bernarducci. <laughs> On to boys basketball. We're gonna recognize two juniors who were all section selections this year. First up is Sidney Theibel. He averaged 13.8 per game, 14 rebounds, and two blocks. He was named to the all-tournament team in the Michael Tuohy tournament. He was also an all-league, and he's being all-league selection, and he's being recognized tonight as an all-section selection, Sidney Theibel. Our next basketball player is Colby Martins. He averaged 19.5 points per game. He was an all-tournament selection in the Michael Tuohy tournament as well as the Hendrick Hudson tournament. He was a Class B sectional all-tournament selection. He was the league MVP as well as being all-league and he was an all-section selection, Colby Martins. Joining them tonight is their coach, Scott Brennan. Uh, as I mentioned, the team was league champions with a record, overall record of 19 and four. They finished second place in the Tui and the handheld tournament. Um, they won two playoff sectional games to reach the county center this year and he was voted section one class B conference three coach of the year. for the okay to go ahead. We were waiting on one more coach, but we'll start with the players. Girls basketball is our last team being recognized tonight. Uh, again, no strangers to coming to these meetings. Girls basketball team had a, an amazing season this year. They were the league champions. They were sectional champions. They were regional champions, and they were state runner-up. Uh, they finished with a record of 25-2. and two. Um, We're going to recognize each of the members of the team. They're going to co come up for their uh, certificates. Uh, but one note I would say when I go around and, and, and see all my colleagues and stop in and see many people who see our girls basketball team play, the one thing they always talk about is the amazing teamwork. So as each of these players are called up, 
every person works together in this team. And I know Coach Moore has many sayings, but she believes they act as one, pulling on the rope, I believe, as one. Um, and it's never more evident than when you watch them play. They move the ball. They pass so well. Uh, they are truly a team. So uh, we will call up each member of the team uh, and recognize a few individuals along the way. First up, Katie Laboon. Next, Kate Hanna. Kate Hanna, sorry. <laughs> Next, Anya Cleary. Grace Thibel. Okay. Well, we're gonna recognize her anyway. Next up, no, I don't think she made it tonight, Nikki May. Uh, next up, Miranda Farman. Couldn't make it tonight. Mia Mascone. I think the rest are here. Okay. Eva Gilbert is here. Our next member is not in attendance, but I would like to recognize Abby Conklin, who is all league, all section, and she was voted to the Class B sectional all tournament team, Abby Conklin. We have four seniors that are left, and they've become known as the core four. Um, just a little bit of numbers on the core four uh, to give you some perspective on the last four years. Uh, pretty impressive. Four league championships, four sectional championships, three regional championships, and two state final uh, appearances. Overall record over the last four years of 94 and 8. So um, these four seniors uh, had a number of individuals awards as well. First up, Mary Brereton. Mary was uh, all league selection. She was all conference selection. She was a section one all academic selection. She uh, was selected to the state all tournament team and she received a sportsmanship award, Mary Burton. <laughs> Next is Heather Hall. She. Heather was all league, all conference, and also voted section one all academic, Heather Hall. Our third senior, Olivia Valdez, all league, all section. She was voted to the state all tournament team and she's going on to play lacrosse at Merrimack College. Olivia Valdez. <laughs> Our final senior, Kelly Degnan, all league, all section, and MVP of the Class B sectional tournament. She's going to play basketball next year at SUNY Plattsburgh. Kelly Degnan. Finally, the coaches. Um, I think Coach Barr would say she could not do anything without these three assistant coaches. 
um, and they truly act as a family and a group. Uh, to see them in action at the games is, is remarkable to see how they work so well together. Um, one of, two of them are former players. The first one is Lisa Bucci. Another assistant coach who's also the JV coach, but is at all the varsity games and contributes so much, uh, not here tonight, but Michael Tulin. And I would call this person Coach Moore's right hand person. Um, although she's not here tonight, but she's trying to get here. She's picking up her son, and, and those kids are around at all, and that's more to the family atmosphere that Coach Moore has at her games, uh, but a true value to the team, and that's Barbara Constantine. So last is Coach Marr, um, and uh, she's not going to like this, but i got to read some numbers because they're truly amazing. Um, and I owe her because she gave me a hard time about the bus going up the states. Um, <laughs> that's right. Um, so the last nine years for Coach Marr, nine league championships, eight sectional championships, 11 regional championships, four state championships, three federation championships, and a record of 215 wins and 18 losses. Oh, my God. Gets better. We go for a career, and we won't go into how many years. Um, 22 league championships, 18 sectional championships, 13 regional championships, five state championships, four federation championships, and a career win total of 698. Um, pretty amazing numbers, but I think if you ask any of the coaches around the league, um, throw all those out, a better person. Coach Moore. We don't want you looking like you're stuck against the wall. We'll get out of the way. We'll get out of the yeah. way. Can we lift the screen up? Yeah, can we do the screen? No. Go. You have a contrast too because you got Eva right there who's still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun to watch that team. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Because maybe Sydney Thibault was right in front of you, in which case that would. So maybe Sydney Thibault was right in front of you. Like who? Yeah. Who's band is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Dahlia. All right, bye. All right, congratulations. Hey, Dahlia. Hey, Dahlia. Congratulations. Thank you. She's the best. I have more stars than I have. Wow. Well, that was a lot of fun, Dr. Harrison. <laughs> Last one. Dahlia? Dahlia? That's her so, we're now going to move to <laughs> from the past to the future. I've been in this position before. With the 2018-19 the, uh, proposed budget, which we spent uh, a good amount of time reviewing and discussing. We may need to close the door. Thank you. Showing promise. Uh, so, Dr. Harrison, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. Appropriately stated. Um, the past to the future, but when we go back and think of the last two board meetings uh, today, well, the student recognition today and all the academic recognition uh, at the last meeting, this is what, why we do it, right? And thinking about the great accomplishments of our students, this is just a few examples of that. Uh, as promised, this is a quick presentation this evening that is recapping what has been a, um, a thorough and uh, really strong process um, this year that has been grounded um, in our vision for tomorrow and thinking about those principles that we want to make sure that we're focused on at all times to ensure that we're providing the very best for our schools while keeping a watchful eye on the tax dollars for our community. And in doing so, we've kept a close eye uh, to our strategic objectives that were linked to so many of the conversations that we had and to any of our residents watching at home. Um, if we go back and look at previous presentations, you'll see the correlation between our strategic objectives and many aspects of our budget that we've developed this year. Um, as Mr. Hanna, Hanna indicated, um, it has been a long process um, where we've be certainly worked through a number of months um, to arrive at the point we are today when the board will adopt the final uh, budget that will be voted upon uh, by our district residents on May 15th. Um, when we think about where we were um, going back only one week ago, um, we had a couple of adjustments um, that we had to integrate into this final uh, budget as highlighted before you. Um, the first was an increase in state aid. The second was a reduction in the campus late bus, um, which also not only was it reduced from, um, four, from five to four days, um, but we also agreed that we're going to look at this as a pilot program and evaluate it mid-year. And then there was one modest little adjustment that we made in push-ahead numbers as Carol was fine-tuning things. Um, and then finally, um, with these remaining funds, um, we're looking to invest them in our school safety and security initiative this year. So with that said, um, a summary of the considerations that have been worked into the budget. Um, for this year, and I think the one thing that um, the board and administration and our community should be proud of is looking at the balance, that we're investing in students with some new opportunities. We are um, finally able to look to deliver on our vision for a K-12 uh, continuum of Project Lead the Way um, with an addition of a K-2 program, um, and lots of focus on our facilities and, of course, some focus on our finances by looking to invest some money towards tax certs. I do want to note uh, that where you see the double asterisk around security initiatives where we see a figure of 86,175 to draw your attention to the bottom of the screen where the total that the board is investing in security initiatives exceeds $122,000 in the 18-19 school year. Um, that said, I've reiterated the point many, many times that this is a very tight, very conservative budget. Um, we're going to have to be cautious as we move forward. And over the last few meetings, I've drawn attention to the areas of special education, um, tax certs, and facility needs as areas that we need to have caution uh, moving forward. Um, the one thing, um, as I said before, um, but this does align with the vision. And it provides for so many different aspects to deliver a well-rounded, very responsible budget Again, touching on so many important aspects of the school district's operation, um, beginning with the alignment of our strategic goals and objectives, um, all the way down to making sure that we have compliance with the New York State tax levy cap. Um, here's a calculation of the cap. 
with the allowable increase of just more than two point two million dollars and our projected revenues for this school year and you can see an increase of two point two four seven million dollars is looking at a variance of three point eight percent for a total proposed budget of sixty one million three hundred forty eight thousand one hundred seventy five dollars and the expenditures which of course align <coughs> with our revenues that are forecasted for the eighteen nineteen school year uh, a visual um, to highlight um, where our monies go and when we step back and look and the point that we've made on numerous occasions that almost seventy three percent of the funds go directly um, to personnel uh, so you can see that um, almost all of the money that we have um, goes directly into the classroom uh, for the folks that are responsible for delivering the education and those for caring for our school buildings. Uh, we've also broken down our expenditures um, by individual function areas. So when you look at those larger categories to get a sense of where the growth resides each and every year, um, this is something that's important to look at. Um, you can see the one negative that stands out this year, which is debt service, where we've seen a reduction of 15.4%, which obviously helped to offset some of the additional increases that we've discussed throughout the process. Um, a quick visual um, to help residents um, to calculate their taxes for this coming year, utilizing this year's um, estimated tax rate. And an overview of our budget trends um, to look where we have gone um, through the years. Again, looking at uh, really what has been a lot of conservative budgeting over the, over the past years. Um, so we, in some we, numbers that were already referenced before, um, in looking at the total budget amount of $61,348,175, uh, percent budget increase of 3.8%, and then the tax rate, which is uh, 1941. Um, we always have to keep in mind a contingent budget, and this is kind of the ugly of a budget going out to a school vote. Um, if the, we went out to our vote in May and it was defeated by the voters, and then there was a subsequent no vote in June, we would move towards what is called a contingent vote. And in doing so, we would have to make um, significant reductions to our school operations. Um, and it would require us to make cuts of approximately $2.2 million, and we would only see, as noted, a growth in our budget of approximately $24,000. Um, this would be a horrible scenario. Recognizing the things that we need to cut would be things that would be all the extras outside of the classroom. We couldn't purchase any new equipment, so think of technology, think of facilities, think of resources that are coming into the classrooms on a regular basis. We would only be able to utilize our buildings for community use, outside use, um, in emergency purposes. Um, all other areas, we would have to look at reductions in student programs. So you would have to think outside of the core initially and look at extracurricular and co-curricular programming and then begin to consider elective op offerings. Um, this would be horrible as it would change the Irvington that we are so proud of um, today. Um, However, we hope that we will never find ourselves in this position. Um, we have seen um, support from our voters for many, many years, and um, we are hopeful to earn their trust and support once again um, this year. Um, so tonight, as we said, um, is the adoption. On May 1st, there is a hearing, uh, no formal presentations. Um, we start at 7.15 and with a quick hearing. Um, and followed by a regular Board of, of Education meeting. And then the all-important day of May 15th, um, the budget vote and trustee election. Um, we begin our roadshow tomorrow. Um, Carol and I will be visiting with the PTSA um, to provide a similar overview of the budget for this year. And then there's a number of other opportunities uh, for community members to come and learn more about the budget as outlined here. Um, but additionally, if folks have any questions, there are lots of resources on our website that you can review, and you can always email us at budget at irvingtonschools.org, reach out to any of the administrators or trustees who would be glad to answer questions. Great. Thank you. I don't know if the board is aware, but uh, Carol's presentation, the PTSA, is very popular. I went last year, and you had a packed room, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah. Not always the case for a budget presentation. Although we were
shower tomorrow. All right. All right. Um, so re really at this point, it's, uh, if anybody has a, a final thought they'd like to share, because then we'll uh, move forward with uh, a vote to adopt the, the budget. Um, before we do so, any, any last thoughts? Okay. Uh, for those who, who happen to watch on video, uh, we, we have had a number of, of discussions over the past uh, couple of months, so I can refer you to those uh, to, to see the types of questions, and uh, there's also a number of documents on the website uh, uh, beyond tonight's presentation that, that people can look at. So can I get a motion to adopt uh, the 2018-19 the budget? So moved. Do I get a second? Yes, sir. All in favor? Yes. Whoops. It's a roll call vote. Great. Let's make it special. <coughs> Do you have a preference in which order I go? Yes. Here we go. Maura. Aye. Brian. Aye. David. Catherine. Aye. There you go. And I will say aye as well. Uh, and I will, uh, so I, I want to just, I forgot to mention that uh, Deb Hargraves was not able to join us today, but she, uh, a great participant in the process. Um, here. But uh, congratulations on uh, the process, and uh, thank you uh, to our administrators for leading that process. And uh, on we go to a hearing and uh, a vote on the 15th of May at the Main Street School from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Looking forward to that. So next on our agenda, we have uh, the property tax card. Is there any discussion or presentation? Or we just note that it's required document. Yep. Okay. So uh, we would vote to approve this. And no roll call. And no roll call. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the 2018-19 property tax report card? So moved. May I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have our uh, consent agenda, uh, which includes a vote on the BOCES budget and trustees. Uh, and that is the extent of that. Could I get a motion to accept our consent agenda? So moved. Great. Can I have a second? second. Great. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Okay. So that moves us uh, rapidly to the conclusion of, of our meeting. Um, is there – certainly doesn't look like there's any interest in public comments, so we're going to move – to uh, uh, mention that our next meeting uh, is May 1st, a little earlier uh, than typical at 7.15 p.m. here in the high school, middle school presentation room uh, where we will have a public hearing on the 2018-19 budget. And that's a wrap. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Do we want to go into? Yes. Yeah. Actually, we have a, a one item to discuss in executives. I hope to keep it short. I know. I know. I know. I'm making a call. I'm just, uh, audible. An audible. So can I get a motion to uh, no? Yeah, to go into executive for the purposes of discussing employment history, employment history of particular persons. So moved. Great. Can I get a second? Aye. Maura, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I was rallying the troops against you. Yes. Yeah.